steer skull kit is a very enjoyable kit to carve primarily because it's effectively a bone finish and you can create that texture using either the knife or the sandpaper that's provided within your kit. It does throw up one little challenge though which is how to carve the antlers or the horns without snapping them off. Now the key to this is actually to start carving away the wood that's between the horns before you take the wood away on the side. Also at this stage, before you start removing material, it's worth taking a quick photograph of the kit with all the lines on. You've got something to refer back to a bit later and you can add in details as needed. So remove the wood from between the horns first. The reason you do this before you take away the, the wood from the side is because if you remove the wood from the side and then you try and take the wood away from in here, the horns become vulnerable and could snap off or you could slice through them too easily. Whereas with wood, on the outside edge, it acts to reinforce the horns. So once you've taken that wood away, you can then start to shave the wood away down here, bringing all of this waste wood away until you're right up close and into the lines outside of the design. Once you've got the two-dimensional design all cut out, you then need to start looking at the three-dimensional shape of the piece. It's a good idea probably to have a quick look online and find some reference, reference images that you can use to judge how you want to lay the three dimensions out. Generally speaking, when I carve a skull like this, the horns will be at the rear of the piece and the forehead will be uppermost. You can then fade down towards the nose and the jawline of the skull there and it means that the eye, eye sockets will be pronounced. You can then shape down towards the, the crown of the head and then off along the horns. How you do it really is up to you, but bear in mind that you're going to be adding details, or if you want to, you're going to be adding details to the skull after. So shape it as you wish. As I say, take a look online at some reference images that will help you with that shaping, or you can just take a look at uh, the, the steer skull that I've carved before, which you'll see in a picture that I'll overlay in a second. And then you'll just be able to have a look and see if it's any help. Once you're happy with the overall three-dimensional form of the piece, before you've added any of the extra details or carved any of the eye sockets or the nasal cavity, if you want to give it a really smooth finish, which is especially important on the horns, bear in mind it's bone, so bone will tend to be quite smooth. Simply take the sandpaper that came within the carving kit, start with the most coarse, which is the, the 120 grit, work up to the 180 and then onto the 240 to achieve a fine finish and to give it that bone-like clarity. Once you've done that, you can come in and start to carve the details in. So for example, with the eye sockets, what you want to do is to score effectively a slightly misshapen circle using the tip of the knife just around the inside and then shave fine bits of wood away towards your initial score lines to start to open up the sockets. You can do the same for the nasal cavity and then the same for the lower jaw there. Up here where the horns join the skull you'll want to do another score line down there and down there just to add a bit of differentiation between the horns and the skull itself. All of these other lines are just little sort of de demarcating, shaping lines uh, which you can produce by doing a very thin or very light score line down and then shave from either side to create valleys, troughs and peaks as and where necessary. So for example, that would be a peak and that would be a peak as they go over the eye sockets and that would effectively be a little sort of trough shape coming up from the, na the nasal cavity. Once you're happy with the shape of it and you're happy with your detailing, you can use the sandpaper again just to open up the eye sockets and just to smooth off any details that you've, you've maybe gone too far with or that you just want to clean up a little bit. And then once you're happy with it all, just take the, the little screw-in eyelet that came with the kit and position it right at the top of the crown of the steer skull's head, screw it in, once it's nice and tight, you can thread the cord through and your steer skull pendant is ready to wear. Anyway, I hope you enjoy carving the steer skull. Good luck. <laughs>